Hello everybody, my name is Mariahko and today I bring you a very quick video on the best way to clean up your Minecraft worlds and remove any unnecessary chunks from them. There's a few different reasons you may want to do this. First and foremost, if you're going into a new update that has new terrain or new structures, you want to get there as soon as possible. You don't want to have to go through all of this previously explored terrain that doesn't really have anything there. So removing chunks makes that process quite a lot faster. It also reduces the file size of your world, which if you take regular backups of your world, if you're on a server or anything like that, well, this is quite helpful. And it also can help with corrupted chunks. If you have any world corruption and you want to reset an area of your world, this is a super easy way to do that. The way that we're going to do all of this is a program called MCA Selector. It's a relatively obscure program. I only found it because I was creating something similar and I ended up bumping into the GitHub page for this one. So it does seem pretty unknown within the community, but it is actually quite fantastic and does a really good job at what it does. So first things first, we need to go ahead and download the program. In order to do that, we need to come to this GitHub page right here. So this is github.com slash quirs slash MCA selector. And I will have that link to down below as well. So at first this page might look a little overwhelming. There's source code and then tons of information about the program itself which is actually worth going through. Keep in mind this program can do quite a few more things that I'm going to show here today. For example, you could delete all of the entities within a certain area, or even change a biome from one type to another. For today though, we're just concerned with trying to remove all of our unwanted chunks, so let's go ahead and scroll all the way down to the very bottom and find the section titled Download and Installation. So at the very top of this, there is a Download Version button, and this will correspond to whatever the latest version is at the time, of course. Right now it's 1.10. And this is going to download a single jar file. Now, there's no actual installation necessary for this, but depending on how Java is installed on your computer, it may need to be run in a different way. For many of you, simply double-clicking the file will work. Others will need to run it in a slightly more manual way. Now, there are instructions on how to do this down below, including if you don't actually have Java installed and you only have Minecraft, but these instructions aren't super clear. So if you do have any trouble with this, leave a comment down below and I'll do what I can to help you out. It would take a little bit too much time to try and cover all of the problems here though. So once you have it up and running, we're gonna go ahead and move into the program itself. So here we are in MCA Selector, but before we open up a world and start modifying things, it is absolutely crucial that you create a world backup first. The process that MCA Selector goes through once you start modifying things is instantaneous and irreversible, and it is very easy to accidentally delete something you didn't mean to or just cause any number of problems. Even the program itself could cause an error on you. So make absolutely sure, beyond any reasonable doubt, that you have a safe backup before you do any of this. You will be thankful for it if anything ever goes wrong. To begin, we're going to go ahead and click on File and Open. And this is going to send us automatically to where Minecraft stores its save files. If you have ever changed that directory or if you've downloaded a world from elsewhere, you will need to navigate somewhere else on your hard drive to find it. I'm sure you can manage. So for us, we're going to go into this world folder right here. This is a backup of my server. And now we need to find a folder that contains region files. Now there's a few different places you can find these depending on which dimension you want to modify. If you want to modify your overworld, this region folder right here in the base folder of your world is where you want to select. If you want to go to the nether, you would go to dim-1, and inside of there there is another region folder. And if you want to go to the end, you would go dim-1 without the dash, and you would go down to that region folder. Now, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to start off with the end, just because it's a nice clean example. I'm going to go ahead and click select folder and that is loaded in the entire end from this world. So this has created a lovely overview of the end dimension of this world. We can pan around by holding down the middle mouse button, and we can also zoom in or out by using the scroll wheel. So if you just wanted to see the general layout of your world or see where terrain is already generated, this is a pretty good way to do that. But of course, what we're here to do is clean this mess up a bit. Now, in the case of the end, that's actually pretty simple, because all we really want to do is keep this one central end island here and delete everything else. The rest of these islands are kind of a waste of space at this point. All of the end cities are raided, everything is taken from them, and when we want to go and find new ones, we have to navigate our way through all of this to find new terrain. 
So we want to go ahead and delete all of this stuff outside of our central island. Now in order to do that, the first step of it is going to be to select all of this stuff. And there's a couple different ways we can go about doing that. Now the easiest way, and by far the most basic way, is simply clicking on it. By clicking on any of the tiles in here, we can select them. We can also click and drag. And each one of these blocks represents a 512 by 512 block area, so you can actually clear quite a lot of terrain quite quickly. If you change your mind and want to remove some of these, you can right click to undo the selection. You can also right click and drag in order to remove large areas. Now should you want to do that on a slightly smaller scale, for example, let's say you wanted to remove this end city here and let just that one end city regenerate, what we could do is zoom in a bit and you'll see the grid got a lot smaller as well. Once that grid is smaller like that, we're now working on a chunk by chunk basis. So every block we click is instead 16 by 16 blocks. So what we can do down here is just select our end city. We can also refine our selection by right clicking. And now I could go ahead and delete these chunks and that one end city would regenerate, but nothing else around it would. So that's pretty good if you just want to clear out a very specific area or if you have a situation like the end where you're only working in, you know, kind of a basic place, somewhere that doesn't have a lot of builds and doesn't have a huge amount of terrain, it works okay. You know, you can roam around, it might take you a couple minutes, but you can select pretty much everything here relatively easily. And then once you have everything selected that you want, you would just go up to selection and delete selected chunks, or just push control D, and that'll give you a little pop-up and allow you to do that. So again, that works relatively easy and it works okay for spots like here in the end where it's very basic and there's not a lot of builds to worry about or you know anything else that you might want to preserve out here. Of course, if there was something you want to preserve, you could always just right click and that would be fine. But when it comes to the nether or the overworld, places where you have more builds and you might have multiple bases and you might have rail lines connecting them together, things get a little bit more complicated. So the better system to use, generally speaking, is the filter system. So the filter system is essentially a way to have the program itself do all of the chunk selecting for you based on some automated parameters that you give it. You can access this by going to tools and filter chunks, and there's a few options in here already. These would actually be kind of handy at the moment, but we're going to go ahead and delete these by clicking these little red trash bin icons. We're going to go ahead and add our own. Now, some of these are probably not super useful as ways to, you know, kind of select or unselect chunks. Some of them are actually super useful though. So, last update, for example, might come in handy for you. This one allows you to determine whether chunks were loaded before or after a set time. So, the most common way I could see this one being used is you provide a specific date. So, that is in year month day format. So, if you go 2020 01 01 and we go to less than this will select any chunk that has not been loaded since the beginning of 2020. You could of course also change that to a greater than and it would select every chunk that's been loaded after that point. And you could even add another parameter, another last update, and you could set it in between two dates if you wanted to. So that might be kind of useful for you in certain circumstances. There's also palette, which is a very interesting one. This one essentially allows you to select chunks based on whether there is a certain type of block in them. So here in the end, for example, we might want to put in purple block and then a comma and then maybe end stone bricks. And this would essentially go through our entire end and select all of the end cities and potentially a build if someone did anything with those two blocks here. And it would, you know, mark them for deletion. So we could go ahead and delete all of the end cities, but leave the existing terrain alone and all of the cities would then be renewed when we go near them. So that's an option. You can also invert that selection. You can choose this little uh, icon here from set notation. That would invert it so only the end cities didn't get selected. So there is actually one more that I think is probably by far the most useful. But here in the end, we actually have to use X position and Z position. Or rather, those are kind of the most practical ones to use. So what we're actually going to want to do here is make it so we have a little bounding box around our main end islands and everything outside of it will just get deleted. It's kind of the most practical approach, I feel. So here with the exposition, we're going to want to go greater than 
And this number right here is not a number of blocks. So you don't want to set this to a thousand, which would be this border out here. You instead want to set this in number of chunks. So it's essentially a number, you know, if you wanted to go by block count, you'd go block count divided by 16. So if we go 30 or so, that should be about 500 blocks out. And now everything that is that distance, so about here or so, to the right will be selected. Now, of course, we also want to select everything else. So we would add another X position, and this one would go less than negative 30. Now, you do need to be careful of this little thing over here, though. Uh, currently, this is saying and. So it would need to find blocks that are both way over here and way over here, which is physically impossible, so it wouldn't select anything. Instead, we want to change this to or. So it will actually, you know, anything that fits either of these parameters. Now, of course, that will go in both sides. We now need to do up and down. So let's go Z position greater than 30. Change that to or. And again, Z position less than negative 30. Change that to or. Now, down at the bottom, we have a couple other options. Um, right here, we can determine what we want to do with these chunks. We can automatically select, export, or delete them. I would probably advise against automatically deleting them. I would probably recommend having them selected first and then deleting them after you reviewed what happened. And exports, that's something we're probably not really going to cover right now. You can export certain parts of your world, and I guess that's kind of handy for backup purposes, but for right now, just create a full world backup and we'll worry about exporting stuff another time. There is also the ability to set a radius. So essentially what this would do is it would expand out your selection a set number of chunks. So this would go five chunks in every direction from where we selected. Right now we don't really want that, we just want a nice clean box. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit that, and now it's going to go through our entire end dimension, and as you can see, it's already carving out a nice little box for us. And there we go. So this is now selected most of the end. Now there are these little regions right here, and these are actually returning an error for the program. I'm not entirely sure why that's happening. To be honest, if any world is going to generate errors, it's probably this one. This world has been around for a very long time, has actually changed worlds. <laughs> there was a time the world was so corrupted I had to actually transplant builds from it to another new world to make it work. So this world's been through quite a lot, and I suspect that these errors are triggered because of that. But this is a good example of why I say that you should run with the selection first and why you should have backups, because little hiccups like this could cause you problems. Now, thankfully in this case, super easy. I just need to manually select those and it's fine, but do be aware of stuff like that and do keep an eye out for it. Now, with that, we have selected everything throughout the entire end. So now all we have to do is go selection, delete selected chunks. It's gonna tell us we're deleting 408,000 chunks from the world. We're gonna go ahead and click okay. It's gonna do its thing. And there we go. Now we are down to just our central end island, nothing else anywhere in the entire end. And that happened automatically, so all of that's gone. If I wanted to revert it, I could not. So with that being said, let's actually head over to the overworld because there's one more option I want to show you. So the reason that I've brought us over here to the overworld of this map is that this is a very good example of a world that is much harder to clean up. There's a lot of builds here and they are spread out very large distances. There's several builds in all directions that are tens of thousands of blocks out. There's also pathways that go out much further than that even. There's builds that are very old and haven't been visited in a long time, but I still wouldn't want to remove them. There's just a lot of stuff going on here that makes it really hard to clean this place up. Ideally, what we would want to be able to do is delete any area that people haven't really used very much. Somewhere that people have generated, but they were just passing through or just walking by. Something that they haven't stopped and built anything. That's kind of the key there. We don't want to delete anything that's been built, but we want to delete everything that's kind of unnecessary around those areas. Now, thankfully, there is a filter for that as well, and that is called inhabited time. So essentially this is just going to tell us how much time people have spent in a specific area. And a good baseline for this, depending on the size of your server, is probably about one hour. Now you can put that time in in Minecraft ticks, but you can also just type it in regular English and it will convert for you. You can use hour, minutes, or seconds, I believe. 
So we're gonna go ahead and do this with one hour and we're gonna see what that outputs for us. That should select pretty much everything around people's bases and all of that. Uh, maybe a few areas that are highly trafficked will stay unselected, but generally speaking, that should select everything that's not particularly important to the world. And there we go. This map is now ready for its most extensive cleanup so far. All of these areas that are marked are areas where players have spent less than an hour of time in total, which means that they should be safe to remove. The one exception to this would be if someone was just starting a new build and they placed down a bunch of chests or shulker boxes but didn't really start doing anything yet. In that case, we may accidentally be deleting them. Now, there's two main ways around this. One, just have a world backup in case anything goes wrong, which you should always do anyway. Uh, you could also use some slightly more strict filtering rules. You could, for example, add in the palette, and you could add in stuff like the chest and the shulker box, and you would say anything that does not contain those. So that is another option in that case. So just keep something like that in mind if you're cleaning up for a server that has a lot of people or anything like that. Uh, if you are cleaning up for a server with a lot of people, you may also want to use a higher time value, something like four or five hours maybe, because if you have a ton of people wandering around, the random pointless terrain may be generated enough to be used for more than an hour, but at the same time, you probably still want to remove it. In the case of our world, one hour seems pretty good. We're gonna have a lot of terrain that is updated. For example, a lot of these oceans over here were not updated in Update Aquatic, so that's going to be kind of nice. And just in general, it's going to clean up the file size of the world a lot, because it was up to like 15 to 20 gigs, I think. So I think that's a pretty good idea of how you can clean up your worlds. You may wanna come through here and you know take a peek around, make sure that all of these areas that are selected have builds in them and are worth keeping. I'm sure some of these, I don't know about that one, but I'm sure some of these are areas that could be deleted. They may be unselected either due to an error or maybe someone just holed up on one of them for a night or two. So it might be worth going into game and checking some of those spots before doing the final delete. But with that aside, it should be pretty good even if you just do the selection and go with that. And with that, I think we're done. You guys should now have a pretty good idea of how to clean up your worlds and servers without too much difficulty, whether that's so you can explore and find new terrain even easier, or if you just want to reduce the file size a bit. To give you an idea of how effective it is at that, that world I was just cleaning up went from 14 and a half gigabytes down to less than one, all while preserving everyone's builds and everything important to the world. So definitely recommend doing this once in a while, even if you're not particularly worried about new terrain. That being said, I think I'm done here. I've covered everything I need to cover. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to some of you, and I'll see you guys next time.